one of the outstanding problems that will face our world when the noise of battle has died away. Where will the soldier find a home when so many have been wrecked, when so many more have just not been built? That is a post-war problem that is receiving quite a lot of attention while the war is still on. Many experiments are being made to find the best and cheapest building materials for comfort, health and cleanliness. Research is testing this and that material for maintaining warmth and admitting the rays of the sun. This ball registers the amount of sun warmth that will enter the parlour of the future. This is protected spine construction with its lift and all its services in the centre. The big towns before the war had well equipped and reasonably attractive flats like this. More and better will be needed. As a temporary measure, we have on view the Churchill prefabricated house, the bungalow mass produced in sections and put up in a few hours. Not sufficiently good looking for us to wish it to be permanent, but heck, we want somewhere to live. The living room is light and airy and attractive, easy to keep clean. And the fire which warms it also provides hot air for the two adjoining bedrooms. On the subject of beds, the designer has an open mind. Women's requirements have been met with a number of cupboards which back onto the wall of the living room. And the kitchen has that simple benefit, the table that disappears into the wall. So much easier than washing up. There's a gas stove, unless you prefer electric. And, of course, a refrigerator where you keep the lager beer. A thermostat switch heats the water when you have no fire. Do you like it? For a small house, for the men who are coming home, and the women who have been working hard in the factories and want to get back to family life, I think it is an ideal house. This sort of thing must be just a bad dream of the past. The house of the future must give everyone a share of the light of the sun and the clean, fresh air. <laughs>